have amazing infrastructure. We have tremendous community support from the community of Cartwright. 2,200 meters, seven holes, and we hit mineralization on every single hole. We've already confirmed that it is a large mineralized intrusion. You've got your romanticized age of exploration still, and Critical Minerals is bringing that back to Canada. Sagam Metals Corp has paid Pinnacle Digest for marketing services, including producing and disseminating this video. Pinnacle Digest parent company owns shares and warrants of Sagam Metals Corp. This is not financial advice. Please read the full disclosure at the end of this video. In the global race for energy security and technological dominance, pipelines of critical minerals now matter as much as oil once did, and experts warn the West is falling behind. Without rapidly expanding its critical mineral supply, it risks losing ground in both the geopolitical and economic arenas. Take titanium. Listed as a critical mineral in North America, its biggest applications are in the ever-important aerospace and defense sectors, which together consume roughly half of all titanium metal mill products. For the titanium sponge feedstock that underpins this supply chain, China and Russia supply about three quarters of world output, leaving Western manufacturers exposed to concentrated sources. Vanadium, similarly vital, is also designated a critical mineral by both Canada and the United States. It reinforces grid scale batteries and strengthens steel inside combat vehicles. Yet China and Russia together produce more than 70% of the world's vanadium, with emerging battery applications further elevating its strategic profile. The US Department of Defense recently awarded a contract worth up to 47 million in funding to support titanium supply chain initiatives. Four Arkansas lawmakers sent letters this spring urging the Pentagon to immediately stockpile vanadium, warning of growing military and industrial vulnerabilities. And for good reason, China has already proven willing to weaponize mineral exports. On the Canadian front, the federal government has announced that critical minerals are the foundation upon which modern technology is built, spurring them to plan a 1.5 billion federal fund aiming to turn stranded Canadian resources into shovel-ready, lower carbon critical mineral operations that fit reliably into North American supply chains. This could create a surge of exploration and development in regions willing to support the federal agenda. One prospective region is Labrador, on Canada's windswept North Atlantic Rim, where I'm standing today. Roughly 300 nautical miles to the southwest, Quebec's Côte Nord ships titanium from Rio Tinto's Lactio Mine. While about 450 kilometers up this very shoreline, Valet operates the world-class Boise's Bay Nickel Complex, first discovered and made famous by Robert Friedland's Diamond Fields. Here, just south of the port town of Cartwright, Sega Metals' 100% owned radar titanium project was recently drilled with a successful made in seven hole, 2,200 meter drill program testing a large mineralized layered mafic intrusion, drilling tested just 1 40th of the identified 20 kilometer strike. While early stage, the company's initial drill results may suggest the potential for Labrador to host domestic sources of titanium and vanadium. Metals policymakers now deem vital to national defense and low carbon grids. SAG is pursuing its agenda on a second front as well. In Quebec's James Bay region, where it has formed a partnership with Rio Tinto Exploration Canada, giving the larger player the right to earn 75% of Sega's legacy lithium property by spending up to 44 million. We'll touch on that too. From titanium and vanadium on the Atlantic Rim to sputamine pegmatites in the shield, this junior explorer stands at a crossroads of geology and geopolitics. The radar project is tucked into the rugged coastline of Labrador. And first I'll speak with the geologist behind the discovery, Mike Garrigan, to learn why the company sees potential in this asset. Mike, thanks for having us. We've come over to the edge of the Hawkeye zone. We're about one month removed from Saga's maiden drill program. How important were those results for Saga? They were extremely important and very exciting. Like, you know, 2,200 meters, seven holes, and we hit mineralization on every single hole. That's our proof of concept program right there. We did it. So as a professional geologist, would you consider this to be a brand new discovery? Absolutely. Like when you, you, you have a theory and you test it and you prove that it's there, that's, that's the discovery and that's what we did. Let's talk about some of the results and some of the grades. You know, a lot of investors, they understand what a high gold grade is, copper, titanium, not so much. How were the results? Was it low grade, high grade? How do you guys stack up? Honestly, our, our results, in my opinion, are exceptional. For a titanium magnetite deposit, we have very good titanium, very good vanadium. It's exciting to move forward on. And I know there's two types of grades. 
Can you talk to us about the two different types? Yeah, absolutely. All these grades that we're reporting on right now, you can call it our head grades. These are the grades coming right out of the rock. You've got the ground mass, you've got your oxide magnetite layering. Our objective now is now that we know we have such phenomenal grades in the rock, in the head grade, is to get that to a point where we can understand the concentrate grade. Let's talk a little bit about the other metals, vanadium and iron ore. How do those grades stack up from a geological perspective? These grades are also very, very good. I mean, this is not an, you know, an iron project. This is a titanium vanadium project. And the titanium vanadium are, in my opinion, phenomenal for what we're dealing with. Focusing on the oxide layer, where we want to mine, where we want to focus, those titanium vanadium grades are really what we want them to be. Okay. You've mentioned that you've only explored about 1 40th of this system. Yeah. Can you explain that to us? Absolutely. So the anomalies that we've defined on the surface based off of regional geophysics, soil samples and rock samples are suggestive of a 20 kilometer oxide layer. Our proof of concept program this past winter tested 500 meters by 500 meters of that. So we've got 19 and a half kilometers less. That's 1 40th of this entire oxide layer. I noticed the vanadium and the iron ore grades tend to fluctuate like over the seven holes. Yeah. Why is that? Over the seven holes, you got to remember that four of those holes tested the oxide layering. Three of those holes tested further back in the magnetic anomaly and tested only the ground mass of the gabbro-norite. So titanium, when you're getting magnetite, has been very, very consistent, but the vanadium and the iron content are very good where it matters, and that's the oxide layering. Mike, I can tell you genuinely enjoy doing this. What excites you most about the potential here at Radar? You know, what I find most exciting about this project at Radar is that the Saga Metals team had an idea, we tested it and proved it right. That's exciting. You've got your romanticized age of exploration still, and Critical Minerals is bringing that back to Canada. Thanks for having us, Mike. Best of luck. Yeah, thank you. After hearing the boots on the ground perspective from Chief Geologist Mike Garrigan, it's time to bring in the second Mike behind Saga's story, CEO Mike Steer, to get a sense of the company's broader strategy and what comes next. Mike, it's great to be with you. It feels like we drove to the edge of the world, but yet there's hydroelectric power, there's a port, there's all this infrastructure. Is that part of the reason you chose this part of Labrador? In the development of uh, Saga, uh, Michael Garrigan's thesis was always around finding underexplored, overlooked areas, and so the thesis was around Labrador. And from there, we basically developed internal criteria in terms of being able to de-risk these projects and infrastructure was at the top of the list to make sure that as we find high potential projects, there's also that infrastructure to support further development. Saga is really a two-pronged story, right? You've got titanium, vanadium, and iron ore here in Labrador, but you also have lithium in the James Bay region of Quebec. And you've done a deal with Rio Tinto Exploration Canada. Can you talk about that? What stage is that at? In July of 2024, we executed a approximately $44 million option agreement with Rio Tinto, whereby they pay us some cash payments as well as put $44 million into the ground to earn up to 75% of that project. So over the first four years, they have to spend just under $10 million to earn the first 51%. And then for the following five years, they have to spend up to $34 million on the ground to earn the remaining 24%. Mm -hmm. And how much have they spent to date? Rio Tinto Exploration Canada is the operator of the project. They ran airborne geophysics last year, as well as a ground-based mapping, sampling, prospecting program. They spent about a million dollars. Their budget's set for this year, and they're going to go back and do the remainder of the airborne geophysics, as well as do some continued ground reconnaissance over some of the more high potential areas that they uncovered during the uh, 2024 program. So investors looking at Saga, some might see a multi-commodity explorer, others might see a company just focused on the radar titanium project. What are you? Yeah, so we're a diversified critical mineral company. So when we established Saga, it was about, again, coming back to underexplored, overlooked jurisdictions such as Labrador. And so we were able to create a centralized hub that can have access to four high quality projects that we 100% own, giving shareholders the ability to participate in lithium, uranium, titanium, vanadium, and iron ore. You know as well as anybody, exploration isn't cheap. Metallurgy, drilling, exploration, it all adds up. How are you planning on meeting those goals for radar in the future? 
Yeah, so for this summer, we've got all of our um, exploration budgets locked in. We've got the team right now working on road maintenance and access trails into the trapper zone right along the oxide layer. They'll also do ground-based geophysics with the magnetometer. That's the same geophysics that we did over the Hawkeye zone, which essentially created a magnetic inversion, an anomaly that Mike Garrickin could use to delineate the drill target. So we use that as our proof of concept. We now want to take that over the main two anomalies in the trapper zone. Garnering that type of information is going to be able to allow us to show investors that not only is the Hawkeye zone real, but we have the same ability to replicate this in the trapper zone. And so we are anticipating that's obviously going to be the catalyst to go and raise the three and five million dollars that we need to run the projected 10,000 meter program over the trapper zone over the next 12 months. Now there's always risks from infrastructure, community relations. What are some of the risks that you see that could create issues down the road? Yeah, you're not wrong. Like setting up any junior exploration company, there are always going to be those risks. You uncover these things as you move through the development process. However, in setting up Saga Metals and finding these projects in Labrador, we did a lot of the due diligence, a lot of the hard work to check a lot of the boxes and de-risk these projects before we actually purchased the claims or acquired the claims and, and started our work on the ground. And so at the end of the day, we've had tremendous success and we'll continue to develop them and take things in stride. Junior companies rarely take a project like this all the way to production. Now, are you planning on doing what you did in the James Bay region by partnering with a major to help you advance this project? Where I see the radar project going is gonna be a little bit different than the Legacy Lithium project. There, it was very early stage grassroots. We didn't have a lot of information on the ground, however, enough to assume that it was perspective. And so Rio Tinto will work that ground and assuming uh, it's successful, they'll earn a great stake in that project, still leaving a very respectable stake for Saga and our shareholders. However, with the radar project, we've already confirmed that it is a large mineralized intrusion and so the difference here is that now we just need to finish the rest of the work to build up to that mineral resource estimate. So I don't see it as much of a JV option agreement. I see us eventually selling this to a major company that wants to put it into production. You never really know when a company is gonna come knocking. At the end of the day, it's our job to continue to de-risk this project and move it down the development path. I think that perhaps by the time that we get to a mineral resource estimate and into that pre-feasibility study is maybe when, when that might happen, but we'll see as we move this thing along. And how far out do you think SAGA is from that? You know, conservatively, I'd say within the next two to three years. Now, skeptics of junior mining often say that companies will dilute their shareholders by just issuing shares without making a meaningful discovery. Now, how are you gonna avoid that pitfall? So Saga, we've got stringent capital management practices. We've only issued 39 million shares. We've raised over $7.5 million to date, and we've been executing every year, um, three years on, across all four of our projects, and it's undeniable that we've advanced them, and we'll continue to do that as we move forward. For investors following the story, looking out six to 12 months, what catalysts or milestones should they focus on? Our ground-based programs are already underway. Budgets are locked in. We've got crews doing road maintenance and creating an access trail into the trapper zone, as well as we're gonna run the same geophysics over the two main anomalies. If we can replicate the same success at Hawkeye at Trapper, you know, we have reason to believe that this vanadium titanium project could become comparable to some of the largest projects on the planet. Thanks, Mike. Good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. Around the world, nations are working to secure the critical minerals that support modern industries, from clean energy and aerospace to defense and digital infrastructure. Here on the edge of Labrador, Explore Sega Metals has taken its first major step, completing its maiden drill program at the Radar Titanium Project, where all seven holes intersected mineralization and support continued exploration for minerals considered strategically important in North America and around the world.